So, about uh, three, four years ago, we did a major start with education. Entrepreneurs need an MBA. Yes or no? What was the question? Well, by now the answer is pretty clear. Entrepreneurs should not have an MBA. Well, by now it's uh, pretty conventional that uh, entrepreneurs don't need an MBA because the uh, MBA provides them with the wrong kind of uh, skill sets and uh, it can uh, actually hurt uh, their success rates and probably this is uh, one thing to debate those people are you know, wondering whether they should pursue an MBA or pursue a, a career as an entrepreneur. There are articles about three reasons why startups are the new MBA. A startup should replace the MBA. Or what are the reasons why most MBAs fail when uh, they launch their startups. So let's look at some of the reasons why most traditional MBA programs fail in uh, training entrepreneurs. One of the complaints is uh, that uh, the MBA provides you with the wrong kind of expertise. Courses on human resource management, operation management, etc prepare you to uh, cope with the challenges of uh, multinational corporations rather than startups. This is just the wrong skills. Or uh, the MBA uh, training uh, allows you to do business analysis, uh, try to solve problems, while startups don't have time to do very thorough analysis. They have to act fast. Or uh, that uh, the MBAs are not practical enough. They provide you with theories, with models, not with uh, solutions to practical problems. Uh, furthermore, most MBA programs that last two years cost a fortune. Uh, most entrepreneurs can't really afford this. It's a waste of time. It's not going to the startup world. Uh, so uh, in addition, when you graduate from an MBA, you are placed in the wrong network. It's highly unlikely that you will be connected to the people that can provide you funding for your idea or for marketing support. Uh, what uh, most uh, critics don't tell you is that uh, out of, this is just a survey from last week in Harvard, 75% 75 of uh, the uh, entrepreneurial startups that received funding from VCs actually failed. There are not many uh, Bill Gates, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, like that succeed. And uh, there's a question of whether indeed uh, an MBA is in or not. So what uh, you want to do is to go and look uh, where uh, entrepreneurs were successful. Where startups come from? They come from the startup nation. Uh, I would encourage you to practice entrepreneurship in the startup nation because this is the nation where uh, some of the most successful, inspiring uh, companies have emerged. In Israel, there are more than 3,000 startups uh, launched in the past uh, few years. When you look at uh, NASDAQ, you see that uh, besides uh, Canada, Israel is uh, the one that uh, produced the utmost number of uh, corporations listed. In NASDAQ, this is in absolute numbers. Uh, if you look at VC funding, again, uh, Israel is second only to the U.S. in absolute numbers. And uh, in Israel, you have the highest concentration of uh, advanced uh, high-tech companies with the exception of the Silicon Valley. And this is probably because when you look at Israel, you realize that uh, this is where you can find the highest per capita rates of uh, engineers, PhDs, patents, scientific publications, etc. Uh, but uh, if you agree with me that you should be in Israel to pursue uh, your entrepreneurial aspirations, the question is where you should start this, uh, uh, this tour. And I would encourage you to look deeper into the startup nation and see what's the engine behind this uh, startup factory. And the engine behind the startup factory is what we call the Technion Nation. The Technion is uh, the primary uh, university, the first university established in Israel. It's a uh, rated number 23 among uh, engineering universities in uh, the world, and uh, it uh, is uh, responsible for much of uh, what we see in the startup nation. Besides the three Nobel Prize winners in the past seven years, when you look at uh, other achievements, such as uh, the uh, collaboration with Cornell, uh, where the Technion won against other six universities, including Stanford, you realize that you have something unique at the Technion. Let's uh, just look at the numbers. So uh, Technion has uh, about 70,000 graduates, and uh, if uh, you consider the best, uh, most successful companies in Israel, sorry about that. 
Usually I turn, I turn off the cell phone, etc. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you look at the, the leading uh, high-tech corporations in Israel, you realize that a third of them are uh, being founded by uh, technical graduates. If you look at the companies listed in NASDAQ, the Israeli companies, half of them are led or managed by technical uh, graduates. 65% of technical graduates uh, hold managerial positions such as CEO and uh, VPs. Uh, about, uh, I think it's 25% uh, of the quarter of the technical graduates have launched a startup. 20% uh, have worked for a startup company. So I can continue with the numbers, but you get the idea. The technical is responsible for much of the growth of Israel in the startup uh, arena. So what you need to do is uh, not to debate whether to uh, launch a startup or pursue an MBA. You can do both at the technical in less than one year. And this is what I want to uh, uh, describe. So our program is a unique program that allows you the opportunity to launch your startup or get involved in the startup scene, become an entrepreneur or uh, engage in entrepreneurship within your uh, corporations and get a prestigious degree of uh, the technical. The program that we offer is a one-year intense program taught in English and you'll have the ability to learn with some of the best students from all around the world. You can talk with each other and see how highly qualified uh, some of the potential candidates to this uh, program. So our program uh, offers specialization in entrepreneurship, innovation, technology management, and uh, it also highlights your uh, practical expertise. This is uh, conveyed through various components such as projects, internship, etc. Uh, we'll also tell you about how you can uh, leverage the collaboration we have with Cornell and uh, Yale and many other uh, leading institutions in uh, the world. And uh, most uh, important, this program is held in Tel Aviv. I don't have to tell you about Tel Aviv. This is one of the most exciting cities, not only in terms of its uh, bars, uh, restaurants, the best thing, but also this is uh, considered one of the most innovative the cities in uh, the world, which has won many prizes uh, in terms of uh, per capita entrepreneurship innovation, it's uh, among the leading cities in the world. So this is our new facility in Sorona that uh, once you're admitted, you have the uh, chance to uh, visit it uh, at the uh, So let's uh, take a closer look at uh, our program and tell you more about our curriculum and some of the unique uh, components of this uh, program. So uh, we offer uh, courses, foundation courses, uh, core courses, advanced courses, but we also have uh, unique uh, elements in this program such as the industry visits, uh, the seminars, the uh, consulting projects, and uh, the entrepreneurship, which is internship in entrepreneurship. And I can't believe that I just said it without uh, the pronunciation mistake. <laughs> so uh, first let's start uh, with the courses. This is the only part of the program which might resemble a uh, traditional MBA. Uh, we start with the foundations, and here you can find some courses, you can find it also in other MBA programs, courses in accounting, in organizational behavior, financial management, uh, operations. We believe that you need these foundations in order to uh, succeed with your startups. And uh, this uh, module ends uh, with uh, courses in uh, strategy and the course in entrepreneurship, which basically introduces you to this uh, specialization. The second uh, module is uh, core courses. These are the courses that allow you to specialize in entrepreneurship, innovation, technology management. And what we've done here is to uh, put together the set of courses which are essential for entrepreneurs. Uh, we took out some uh, courses that you can find in most traditional MBA programs, such as corporate strategy, which teaches you how uh, to acquire companies, how to manage multi-business corporations. We don't do that. Uh, in other MBA programs, you might find a course in uh, innovation technology management. This is important for entrepreneurs. So what we've done is to elaborate, and we have four different courses that cover this ground. So we have a course on technology management, we have a course on innovation management, we have a course uh, that uh, deals uh, with uh, intellectual property, and then we also have a course in uh, new product <coughs> development. So uh, we provide you with essential skills that you need if you want to specialize in uh, this area. Uh, so uh, these are the courses that are offered as part of the core courses. You can uh, look at them, they are also in your materials. And uh, then we uh, want to get you even uh, more uh, familiar with uh, this uh, field, so we offer advanced courses. The advanced courses offer you a uh, very practical, useful uh, experience and uh, knowledge-based toolkit that is needed, for example, courses in entrepreneurial finance and corporate valuation, a course on corporate venturing, which uh, will teach you how uh, to select uh, your representative to the board, uh, how to uh, 
cooperate uh, with the VC uh, funding uh, or uh, how uh, to uh, issue uh, stock options. And we have here the FMO with a serial entrepreneur. I think, I'm not sure if it's six startups or 10. 10, 10. 10. Okay, 10 startups. Uh, I should uh, finish this fast before we launch another one. But uh, you can uh, also talk with him to see what he teaches in this course. It's highly practical and useful. So besides uh, these uh, courses, uh, which cover also project management, uh, leadership, international business, we might offer uh, another uh, set of electives. And most importantly, this is a way we can actually leverage our uh, network of collaboration with Cornell and Yale. So if you want to take a course at uh, Cornell or you want to take a course at Yale, you are welcome to do so as part of these advanced courses. In fact, uh, we are part of uh, Yale's advanced uh, network of uh, management. And this means that you get access to more than 20 different business schools. And we have uh, some names here such as INSEAD, uh, Yale, uh, IMD, London School of Economics, uh, and the various other leading institutions around the world. You can just pick one and take a course. Uh, this will be a part of the uh, degree requirement. And the Techam is the only Israel representative in this uh, very highly prestigious uh, network. Okay, so uh, after we finish the courses, we want to talk about uh, some of the most exciting elements of our program. And what we offer here is uh, industry visits. And this is where we take you out of uh, the class, put you on the bus, and uh, take you to uh, visit some of uh, the most exciting uh, companies in Israel. Both uh, corporations like uh, Google and Microsoft, but also startup companies, projects and technological incubators, and other exciting corporations will have the opportunity to talk with uh, the CEO and other executives to learn about uh, how they made it and what you need to do and uh, how you can watch out uh, for some of the pitfalls uh, when you uh, launch uh, your uh, career. And we we'll also use this opportunity of this industry visits to tour the country. So half of the day will be uh, visiting the corporation, then the other half of the day will uh, visit uh, Jerusalem, uh, Jaffa, Caesarea, Akko, and other tourist attractions. This is all part of the, uh, the tuition. It's uh, no extra cost uh, to you. Yes, also high. Uh, industry seminars. This is uh, where we bring the executives and entrepreneurs uh, to uh, campus, and uh, they will uh, tell you about their experience and will do more than that. They will uh, raise a managerial challenge or dilemma as an entrepreneur or uh, innovator, and will uh, offer you the opportunity to try to uh, engage in this live case analysis, provide with feedback. This is where you can actually interact with them uh, on a more personal uh, level. Here you can see in the top, anyone recognizes this guy here? Of course, uh, this is uh, one of uh, the icon entrepreneurs in Israel, uh, involved in launching more than 60 high tech uh, companies over 40 years. And he is uh, one of uh, the folks that will bring uh, two companies to talk with you and uh, share his insights. Another uh, uh, very prestigious uh, visitor will be Dan uh, Schettmann, who is a Nobel Prize laureate from the Technion, who is also teaching entrepreneurship. He is also confirmed for uh, the next year. Now, I think that one of the most exciting elements is uh, where you can uh, get your hands dirty and engage in entrepreneurship. And we offer these uh, practical project courses. And uh, we have two courses, uh, projects, and this is where you work in teams uh, to uh, engage in entrepreneurship. And uh, what we'll do is to have an academic advisor and also a representative from uh, the startup, uh, the venture, the corporation, and uh, they will accompany you while you work on a project. We have two types of projects. The first will uh, take an idea and end up with a product, a commercialized product. And the second one will uh, start with a commercial product and uh, end up with a complete uh, business plan. And uh, in terms of uh, where this project will be held, it can be held either as part of a launchable incubator, uh, maybe a different graduate who wants to launch a startup and uh, get some students uh, help with that, or you can come up with your own idea. Basically, if you have an idea for a startup, we will provide you with the infrastructure that will support you while you apply these projects and uh, complete your business plan. So what's better than uh, writing a, a business plan or a commercialization plan for your uh, startup and getting a grade for it? Now, this is not the most exciting part of the program. I think the most exciting part of the program is uh, the entrepreneurship. And you'll also learn how to pronounce it one day. So in this uh, section, uh, we engage in internship, where you uh, spend uh, a lot of uh, on-site uh, time 
uh, investing in uh, accompanying a startup. Could be, as I mentioned, a project in a technological incubator, uh, one of the technology graduates, uh, or uh, some other uh, company. For example, we work with the Microsoft Accelerator or some projects. Or you can, again, uh, do it for your own uh, startup idea. And you'll spend about 400 hours in total. Uh, this uh, company lasts for about five months. During the first three months, you spend one day per week uh, in parallel to some other courses. And then, at the end of the summer, you spend uh, about two months uh, full-time working on uh, this uh, internship. Now, it's quite flexible because you only need to complete these 400 hours. So if you uh, want to take a vacation in the Caribbean, or uh, you want actually to go to, back to your home country and do the internship in your home country for two months, this is possible. But don't get me wrong, this is not uh, like a two months vacation. It's uh, quite uh, formal in the sense that uh, we provide you with some basic training before you start the internship. We have uh, some meetings where you uh, tell the other students about your progress and you have to file a report at the end. So we accompany you uh, throughout this process so by the time you finish this internship you are quite ready to embark to uh, the startup world and uh, <coughs> invest. Now, uh, I should emphasize that this uh, program is primarily for those interested in entrepreneurship, innovation, and technology management, but it's also relevant for other students who wish to work in corporations and want to uh, get some of the feel of uh, entrepreneurial spirit and perhaps uh, develop some ideas within established corporations or be involved in uh, the banking or the VC side. So it's not just purely for entrepreneurs, but it's most relevant for entrepreneurs. Okay, so now we have uh, some basic idea about uh, our unique program, which is indeed uh, uh, one of a kind. And uh, I want to talk about some of the extracurricular activities that we offer. And uh, one of uh, our main advantages is the Bronitsa Entrepreneurship Center. This uh, center is led by Professor Uzi Dahan, uh, who is uh, also an entrepreneur. He was the CEO of Phoenix in Israel. And uh, this is uh, one of the best uh, platforms for launching startups. Uh, this uh, organization by itself uh, incubated about uh, 12 or 15 uh, different startups, and it offers various uh, streams for uh, launching your startup. For example, one of them is Technion for Life TFL, which offers Technion uh, graduates the opportunity to get uh, some uh, support, uh, training, uh, uh, networking in order to uh, launch uh, their startup. It uh, also uh, provides linkages to the VC industry. Uh, one, uh, just some numbers, so uh, this program started in 2003, it was established by uh, Ruben Agassi, and uh, by now uh, I think it has about uh, uh, 15 or so uh, startups out of 140 applications, uh, four exits worth uh, 120 million dollars, and uh, one of the projects raised about 30 million dollars. Uh, so this one of them might be yours in the future. Uh, we, uh, this uh, entrepreneurship center also uh, runs uh, the Liste competition. This is the national entrepreneurship competition where you will have the opportunity to uh, pitch for your startup and uh, get in direct touch with VCs. The winners in this competition usually get uh, VC funding to initiate uh, their startups. In addition, uh, we have the entrepreneurship club or e-club where from time to time you have the opportunity to meet entrepreneurs, uh, VC managers, etc. and talk with them about your idea, about uh, consult with them about uh, some of uh, the insights that they bring from uh, the industry. Uh, besides uh, these activities, uh, other activities, uh, for example, the Haifa Startup uh, Weekend, it was held about uh, two weeks ago. This is a part of uh, a broader uh, constellation of uh, the Kaufman Foundation, where you have one week uh, where entrepreneurs uh, get uh, to practice entrepreneurship. I can also tell you about uh, this uh, conference, which uh, I'm organizing uh, next year in Tel Aviv. Yes. This is called Startup and Restart Strategies, uh, sponsored by the Strategic Management Society, which is the international organization for strategic management. And we have uh, some of the most uh, uh, leading uh, scholars and practitioners arriving from all around the world to talk for about three days uh, about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, strategy. Uh, here you can see also a photo from our uh, alumni meeting. This is held once, uh, once a year. We also have some other occasions where you uh, can uh, get in touch uh, with uh, your peers, colleagues, and prior uh, graduates. And this is uh, where some of uh, the startups emerge. In fact, we have uh, some of the graduates, I'll tell you more about this later, that emerge out of these uh, conversations. And uh, this is also a supportive network. Also, we uh, have signed a deal with uh, Manpower International. If you uh, also uh, want to uh, consider some employment opportunities uh, outside of uh, Israel. 
so uh, this is uh, the tentative schedule uh, for the program. It's uh, quite intense, I would admit. So a typical day uh, starts at uh, 9 a.m. You take a course uh, for about uh, three hours, then have lunch break, then you take another course, uh, the former part of the uh, training uh, ends at about 4, 4.30, and then you have time uh, to do your homework, read, and prepare for the next day. Uh, so most of the courses are one to two weeks condensed uh, format. Uh, this is uh, the tentative uh, format of uh, the program. We start with the foundation courses, uh, then uh, shift to the core courses, and later to the advanced courses. Usually we take the courses on Sunday through Wednesday, and on uh, Thursday we have the industry visits, uh, the seminars, and the internship that we start. And the program ends uh, toward the end with the advanced courses and consulting projects and the full-time uh, internship. Okay, so one of the reasons that we have this format of condensed one to two week uh, a uh, session is because we want to make sure that uh, we can bring some of the best uh, faculty to teach in this program. So if you look at uh, the list of faculty, uh, some of them are senior scholars uh, from the Technion, but others are leading scholars from uh, the leading institutions around the world, like the London Business School, uh, INSEAD, the uh, University of Toronto, uh, Oxford. So I will not go through the cities of everyone, can uh, look it on the web. Uh, but, uh, for example, uh, Gary Wyshynski uh, completed his PhD at NYU and uh, now is uh, uh, teaching entrepreneurship at uh, LBS. Uh, we have uh, Brian Silverman, uh, he's a senior uh, scholar from the University of Toronto, taught at Harvard for many years. Uh, Hart uh, Posen is my cohort, uh, also finished the water school like myself and uh, spent some time in the University of Michigan before uh, moving to Wisconsin. He teaches international business in the program, and of course he's also teaching in Korea. And you also uh, met uh, Professor Miriam Erez, uh, she won the Israel Prize, a uh, very, very prestigious uh, achievement in Israel. Uh, and you can also can uh, see uh, Zev Ganor, talk with him later about his uh, courses in entrepreneurship and the projects, and Sarit Moldova is also here, she's uh, teaching a course in uh, marketing. You've also uh, seen uh, some of our staff members. Uh, we have uh, our dean, uh, Ronnie Venta. Uh, Professor Mia Maris is uh, the vice dean for MBA programs. Uh, Professor Bill Zohar is the academic advisor. You also saw uh, Dr. Vital Regev, uh, the managing director, uh, Hannah Shapira. Uh, Michal Gresner, currently she serves uh, also as the teaching coordinator, but we will probably recruit someone to have a face here. Uh, Ella Binderman, uh, Mia Ross, uh, and another guy that will uh, recruit to be the social coordinator. The role of the social coordinator is basically uh, to be your friend and accompany you uh, throughout the program to make sure that you are happy and you have all that you need to succeed in this uh, program on the social side. So uh, probably by now you wonder about the admission criteria. What do we need to do in order to get into this program? So uh, probably you've seen it online, you require a statement of interest that ex explains your aspirations and qualifications together with your CV. A two recommendation letter, this is very standard. We might ask for interview at our discretion. In terms of uh, the grades, our uh, minimum is uh, 3.0 or B or whatever country you come from, there is a different scale. Uh, this is the minimum requirement for uh, the undergraduate degree uh, score. We also ask for uh, two years of professional experience. Uh, looking at uh, the application that we received so far, I found that on average uh, the admitted, uh, not admitted, the uh, accepted uh, submissions uh, have an average of about 14 years and their GPA on average is uh, 3.56. So the minimum is just the minimum. Um, also, if you have uh, very exceptional grades in uh, your undergrad degree, you can get exemption from the practical uh, experience requirement. We ask for a, a GMAT exam, uh, but this is also waived under certain conditions. For example, if you have a graduate degree and uh, also have other conditions, you can better consult with Hannah about the specific uh, circumstances. Uh, you can also do a GRE as an alternative. In terms of uh, English qualifications, uh, we ask uh, for a TOEFL exam, but this is uh, waived if you finish your undergraduate degree in a native English speaking institution, uh, or if you received very high score on the, the verbal component of the GMAT or GRE, or you, if, if you insist that you're in Israel, you can just take the Technion's uh, second language English exam instead of uh, the uh, TOEFL exam. Uh, so these are the basic requirements, and uh, if you have uh, specific questions about uh, your own circumstances after this uh, formal session ends, you can uh, talk with uh, Hannah and uh, inquire about your uh, specific status. 
So now you know uh, what you need to do in order to get to the program, but uh, how much does it cost? So this program costs uh, thirty-five thousand dollars. It's quite affordable if you compare it uh, to competing programs uh, of uh, other institutions, uh, one-year full-time programs around the world. And uh, we offer some uh, scholarships, which are merit based scholarship. And in addition, as mentioned earlier, we have this uh, one point five uh, kilo dollars uh, sign bonus for the next uh, forty-eight hours, as well as uh, five thousand uh, dollars scholarship for the first 20 uh, students who uh, register and qualify uh, for the program. So uh, let me finish with uh, some of the success stories of the Technion MBA program. And uh, I want to tell you uh, examples of some of my students that finished uh, the MBA program and where they stand today. So uh, this is a startup uh, by uh, Prophet Levine, uh, Eric Levy, and uh, Lena Levine. They founded a company called uh, Polytouch while still pursuing their MBA degree. I remember they, they came to me and consulted about uh, their company, and uh, they won the business competition in uh, 2007 and received some funding uh, that allowed them uh, to initiate a startup. And uh, just uh, last year, they were acquired uh, by Covidian for $30 million. And it didn't wait too much, they started a new startup, uh, which is highly related to the company uh, that uh, is called Via Surgical. Another example, uh, we have uh, Ariel Kabiri, launched the uh, iSafra. Uh, for those who speak Hebrew, uh, this uh, rings a bell. The idea is uh, to offer like uh, uh, online linkage between caregivers and the care providers, and if you find the name for the Safta or the grandma, and uh, this is a way to bypass uh, some of the staffing agencies that uh, are developing in uh, this uh, industry. And uh, they have now a database which is larger than any staffing agency as well. Uh, Amir Ronan and four other entrepreneurs, all of them, by the way, are different graduates, have established uh, Sensible Medical Innovation in 2007 and raised uh, $7 million a couple of years later. And their startup allows uh, you to basically, if you've seen Star Trek, you have this uh, device you scan over the body and you find all the illnesses and the cures at the same time. It's not exactly like that, but it's pre pretty similar. So it's, it's based on RF uh, screening technology that allows you to spot cancer and use some uh, neurosurgical uh, deficiencies, etc. Uh, MBA graduates near areas, they're on and Ron and they Roy B. They develop uh, Transmit, and this uh, basically is an application that allows uh, users of public transportation to know when the bus is arriving, because misery doesn't arrive on time and how many seats uh, it has available. And this is all uh, on a very accessible platform. They also got uh, $3.5 million from uh, Jimlin. Uh, MBA graduate with uh, Fred Koff, uh, she has initiated the uh, ExploreGate. This is a virtual meeting place uh, where uh, professionals can uh, post technical knowledge and there are users that can access this knowledge in a video format. So uh, you can log on to this website and uh, take a look. MBA graduates, uh, Pavel uh, Zaslavsky, uh, he launched Data Strata. This is an application for hotels that allows uh, the, ho the guests to uh, order some services to the room. Uh, it's an e-commerce platform and also helps them to plan their tours around. It's uh, quite useful. Uh, MBA graduates uh, offer a cruiser in Chilean City Park. This is a solution for finding parking in Tel Aviv. You know how challenging this can be. So basically, this application is uh, based on uh, uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, much like Waze, and it uh, allows you to find some empty uh, parking spots in Tel Aviv or some other cities, and uh, it also reminds you uh, to pay or when your payment expires, and they have signed some contracts uh, with uh, uh, some parking lots in Tel Aviv already. So uh, at this point I want to uh, uh, call uh, Asi Levinger. Uh, I think Asi is here. Yeah. 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 So Asi is uh, one of our most successful uh, graduates and uh, he is received both his uh, bachelor and uh, MBA degree in Technion. He is the CEO of uh, Energix uh, since its inception in 2009. And this is a public credit company worth uh, 140 million uh, shekels. Oh, 150. I have to finish fast because it's a good... Uh, <laughs> and he will tell you more about his uh, venture and experience in Technion. Um, 
I'm here for a very uh, uh, task that I really believe in, to convince you guys that uh, one of the best things you can do is to choose to do an MBA, and the second thing is to do it in the Technion. I have a, a short presentation about, um, uh, I, I call it my company, I'm the CEO, and I was founding it, but it wasn't mine, with the main other shareholder. Uh, but uh, it's my baby, uh, and through the presentation, I will try to um, transfer to you where are the things that the MBA uh, um, helped me helped me in order to create this company, to be the CEO, and to uh, leading it, and I hope uh, successfully. Uh, so, Energies is the uh, public company traded in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. Uh, we founded in uh, founded in 2009. We are part of one of the largest uh, real estate investment companies in Israel called uh, Aloni Heads. Uh, we are one of the leading uh, Israeli renewable energy uh, players. Uh, we raised uh, four million uh, US dollar in fresh equity cash that enter into the company, uh, and we are aiming to become an IPP. What is an IPP? IPP is an independent power producer, like uh, the Israeli electricity company. We want to be an Israeli electricity company who produce electricity from renewable energy sources like wind and, uh, uh, and so on. Um, a little bit about Aloni Heads, uh, equity of net uh, asset value of 850 million uh, US dollars, one of, really one of the largest group in Israel, uh, controlled by uh, two families, the Hetz family, which is a uh, uh, private guy called uh, Nathan Hetz, uh, one of the well-known uh, uh, businessmen in Israel. I know him personally, and I think he is the smartest uh, businessman I know. And the third time uh, group, which are uh, the group who owns Coca-Cola in Israel, Bank Mizrahi, uh, Keshet Broadcasting, <coughs> uh, and uh, Aloni Chetz. Uh, a little bit about the group. Uh, Aloni Chetz owns uh, uh, four, um, four companies, five companies in four different markets, UK, Canada, and Switzerland. Uh, and here in Israel, the most important thing and this is where my uh, um, story begins. Uh, they own a small company called Amot. I call it small because they have only 1.3 billion uh, euros. I used to travel to, to Europe, so now I'm thinking in euros. It's 6.5 billion uh, sh uh, shekels of assets in, uh, in Israel. And I uh, founded myself five and a half years ago as the assistant to the CEO of Amon. Uh, and then uh, um, from that point, uh, I found out that uh, the company wanted to uh, expand. Or actually, they brought it to me, and I found out that we can expand to renewable energy project, which is like real estate, because you are building a project, and the project become, uh, become a generating income uh, uh, asset. Uh, and I must tell you that in that point, without the MBA, I couldn't see that way. In the point I'm standing uh, as an assistant to the CEO, working in the real estate industry, which I actually understand nothing about, but I'll show in a moment about my, uh, um, um, my skill or the thing I studied, this is where I do while I was studying in the, in the, in the MBA and in the internship, and I created energy. Um, Mr. Fetz, Mr. Fetz, uh, he founded uh, Aloni Fetz 24 years ago. Uh, if you put it uh, 1,000 shekels when he founded the company, and you invested every dividend back into the company, today you would have around 180,000 shekels. 1,000 shekels. Um, he is one of the well-known <coughs> businessmen, and I knew <coughs> him by seeing him uh, in some uh, places that uh, we usually we meet. Uh, we have a, a, a common hobby, uh, and during my MBA, I found out that I want someone, I want someone to teach.
teach me, what I miss him, and what I miss him was to really understand how business is working. Um, so now it's about time, I think, to tell a little bit about myself. I'm uh, uh, Asa Lemmy, everybody called me Asi. I'm married, I have three beautiful children, which I love in my life. Um, I was studying, I received my BSMC in computer engineering in the Technion, and then uh, I finished my MBA, I think, seven years ago. Um, from MBA, I was working in the uh, Israeli high tech industry, uh, and when I finished the MBA, it was right, uh, the right time to move for. Uh, 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 working in private equity, and from that point I moved to uh, being an assistant to the CEO of most investors, and from that to energies. Um, about energies, and this slide I show it, uh, um, uh, and I usually show it even in the presentation that I present energies, and, and this slide for me shows everything about the MBA. Uh, this slide took me, um, I think, nearly one month to create. Uh, because when uh, Enterprise was, uh, was founded, uh, we thought, what? Actually, we. It was me and my wife, which is also an MBA graduate uh, with the Technion. Uh, I met her in the first degree. Um, we thought, what is the vision of the company we are going to establish? And what is the vision is something that you learn only in the MBA. Because before I went to the MBA, I, I didn't think of, I knew what I want to do, but the MBA gave me the tools to understand what is the vision. And after you have the vision, what is the mission? And after the mission, you get into the strategy. Everybody talk about the strategy, but before the strategy, you have the, first of all, the vision, and then the mission. And the vision, which is uh, to become a leading ITP, which initially developed, constructed, on the renewable energy project, it seems like a simple sentence, but this shows everything about the company. Uh, that we uh, uh, establish, and this is what <coughs> makes the company what it is today, and it will create what energies will be in the future. Um, this is some uh, a project we already uh, did in uh, solar. Uh, we already invest 60 million uh, uh, in US Valley shekels. We already have a, a revenue of 12 million. Where this is part of the thing uh, uh, we are doing. This is a PV um, PV plant on uh, the largest uh, roof in Israel right now. Um, we are also I I really like this. It's amazing. That's um, <laughs> you. Uh, we are also uh, active in the uh, wind industry. In total, we are developing around one billion. Uh, Israeli shekels of projects in the wind industry. Uh, in the PV, we are around 0.5 million uh, um, Israeli shekels. Um, and that was in natural about uh, the company in order to, uh, to, to try and to, to get into the most important uh, question, why MBA and why in the Technion? Um, I was, I feel stuck. Uh, eight years ago, I was uh, a good engineer. I worked in the high tech industry. I uh, developed uh, uh, some uh, very interesting blogs. I even wrote uh, two patents. Uh, but, but I felt that I'm not in the right direction. I'm moving in the, uh, in the development path, uh, in the R&D. And the most important thing for me that uh, I was far, far, far away from the decision maker uh, um, um, status. I, I, I did what I was supposed to do, I did it quite well, but I was not the one that was leading the company. Um, and I was doing very, very uh, narrow things like develop a very interesting blog or uh, leading a very nice project, but it was just just on one direction and 
very narrow. Um, and then I decided that uh, an MBA, that would be the thing for me to do. Um, I bless it every day, I must tell it. Uh, and then I asked myself where, where to do it. Uh, um, and if you are doing your first degree in the Technion, uh, it's not such a, let's say, easy uh, and fun uh, four years. Um, but then uh, uh, I came to this uh, exactly the same evening like we had today, eight years ago, and I met all the team there, and actually uh, Hannah was there, and Hannah, from the beginning, I saw that she, uh, she is something special that will uh, create the experience uh, of uh, doing uh, this, uh, uh, this degree much, much uh, more fun than the first degree. Um, and uh, it was very, very important for me to look for an institution who in its DNA is to be uh, uh, to be excellent. We are, uh, and I believe that in order to reach uh, uh, your goals, you have to be excellent, and you have to do the utmost. And in order to to achieve it, you must uh, you must learn from the best people. Um, and uh, the quality, the quality of the students, and this is something which I think is one of the most important things in an MBA. An MBA, you can do an MBA by studying two hours uh, a week after after the class, the frontal class, or for example, I used to study I don't know like three hours a day. Uh, we were uh, a group of uh, three students. We really, really uh, learned hard, but we learned hard because it was interesting. And the funny uh, story is that one of my colleagues who was in my team a week ago joined me as the managing of one of the um, uh, one of the subsidiaries of uh, Energies, and it was just a week ago. Um, what I took from the MBA, uh, the MBA gave me. Uh, the opportunity and the tools to look on, on, on things from a uh, broader way of thinking. Uh, now, I, as managing a company, you must know about accounting, you must know about uh, uh, legal, you must know about ethics, which is, you see ethics, why it's so important that uh, uh, first in ethics and then you know, managing uh, uh, a public company you understand that ethics and actually in business ethics is one of the most important things because that's your name and this is how you do business. Um, you must know of course about the uh, R&D, uh, you must understand about project management, you must understand in every, <coughs> everything um, and, and I must tell you that today on a daily basis, I'm using the courses that I took eight years ago, and I uh, use it uh, uh, very, very often, and I'm thankful for the, the, the decision I took, uh, and I decided to focus on the MBA, and, and I hope uh, you will have a successful uh, program. I saw the program, and I must tell that it's even much more interesting than what we did, and I hope I will in a few years have an, another uh, MBA just for the fun, not for <laughs> okay. and uh, thank you.